Okay, so novel and emerging drugs. Um, we, we have to talk about long-acting therapies. We've gotten some teaser information about long-acting therapies. Um, Ian, what, what do we know? Well, the drugs that are furthest along uh, with long-acting strategies are injectable cabotegravir and ropivirine. Um, so um, we have some uh, studies um, mostly using these drugs as maintenance therapies uh, in individuals with virologic suppression uh, that are testing the ability of these agents, uh, which can be administered um, perhaps every four, well, as, as uh, with frequency no more frequent than every four weeks and maybe uh, every eight weeks, um, with um, a couple of shots in the gluteus medius um, uh, that have shown that the combinations in comparison to continuing oral regimens are just as effective in maintaining virologic suppression. Um, individuals develop injection site reactions. Uh, it's a little bit more than, you know, getting a shot of benzathine penicillin or a couple of shots of benzathine penicillin. The, there is some discomfort that can last for a couple of days, but it's rare in these studies for individuals to drop out because of the injections and they tend to tolerate the injections better and better as they continue in the studies over time. I, I would say they tolerate them better than benzathine penicillin because benzathine penicillin is very thick and is very uncomfortable when it's in, injected from what I've told. And <laughs> I haven't gotten it yet. But, <laughs> and these, and cabotegra and ropivirine are liquid and they go in very easily, you know. But they yeah. do cause some irritation at the injection site, you're right. Yeah, I think, I think that the... the Unlike those of you out there that may have used um, uh, uh, infuvertide or Fusion, and, and there aren't nodules that persist, but, but it is, I think there, there's pain. And it's not self-administered. And it's not self-administered. And, right. and the, the, really goal, point, the goal right. here is to create therapies that don't require daily pill taking <clears throat> and may uh, promote adherence. Mm -hmm. Although I would say that they will create other adherence challenges sure, uh, because these are potentially long-acting drugs. Um, they don't disappear when individuals have reached that eight-week time point. They persist. And so if individuals are late uh, in coming in for their next injection, and these aren't easy injections to give. They're not going to be things that people can self-administer, likely. So they'll need to be administered by... Um, a friend or a family member, or people will need to come into the office in order to receive the injection, or the office is going to need to go to them to administer the injection. Um, and so individuals are at risk for developing resistance as the drug concentrations wane uh, if they've missed uh, a dose. So um, they will solve an adherence problem and create other adherence problems. Also, um, you know, these are being tested for prevention, long-acting cabotegravir, uh, and uh, individuals who get uh, long-acting cabotegravir can have a drug level that's measurable for over a year after their last administration. One, one thing I have to ask, because it's going to be fascinating to see how this uh, is rolled out when it happens. What percentage, what proportion of patients who are stably on ART right now do you think are going to want to switch to a, a, an injection every four weeks? Yeah, I, I, I think I, you know, 5%, 5%. Maybe. But I don't think it's, it's going to also depend upon how it's presented to them. Well, no, it just, just. Which could be a big difference. Yeah, without those, without, just, just, just what do you think? Just what do you think? I think there will be individuals <laughs> who will say, you mean I can just show up at the pharmacy and have a pharmacist or someone like a nurse practitioner However, give me, the, give me yeah. this shot. Yeah. I don't have to worry about yeah. any more okay. prescriptions. All I got to show up. And my pharmacy can do that in multiple cities. Okay. So, so, so Joe said, Dr. Aaron said one out of 20. I would say more than that. I'd say probably 15%, 15 to 20% at first. But this is going to be driven, I think, by people telling their friends, 
guess what I'm doing differently now. Right. Yeah. It and, could be. and I think it also it might the dynamic may change a lot if every eight weeks works. And oh yeah. Oh, I think, yeah. 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 Okay. Let's start with every four weeks. The idea of adding my fantasy is that I'll be able to tell those newly diagnosed people not only will they be able to live forever with HIV <laughs> and not have to worry about transmitting to anybody, but they'll only have to think about their HIV six days a year when they're gonna show up at their local pharmacy for an injection. Yeah. And if that's true, if my fantasy comes true, I think it may end up being a lot higher. Yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, uh, it depends, uh, yeah, you know. I would, and, and I would have be... been more in the, you know, one out of 10, one out of 20 as well, yeah. just, but, so, what do you think? Yeah. You know, if it was me, it would be uh, low, uh, because I'd rather just take one pill a day and just be done with a it, yeah. pill. you know, but yeah. when I talk about this issue, I always ask the audience, how many people in the audience would rather take one pill a day or get two shots in the butt every eight weeks and it's usually about 50-50. Yeah, well, I you think know, every I mean, eight weeks is a, is, you know, is a different yeah. 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 And, and also, people don't quite get that you, know, you have to be in a healthcare setting. Right. It's not really. Now, they may. They, they might may imagine an insulin transition. shot. They're they, imagining an right. insulin yeah. shot or something. But the thing I think you have to ask you have to ask people who are HIV positive, mm. right. not doctors who right. are HIV negative. No, that's true. No, that's okay. not yeah, true. That's the whole range difference. And we have to, right. we have to take care of our. Our own biases and get rid of them, right? I have a bias against shots, so uh, personally. Um, <laughs> but you know, but, a lot of our patients have comorbidities. A lot of my patients are on other medications, yeah, no, and just and adding one extra pill doesn't right. eliminate the need to take medications right. every day. But it right. does so, eliminate you know. the stigma of right. having to think about being HIV positive and hiding that pill from everyone in your house. Yeah. No, no, I think that, that that's a, a very big issue. The, the the stigma. The other thing is much like. You were talking about PrEP before. Someone could go on injectables for a year and then go back to oral therapy, or, or you know, it's not like you're making a life forever choice. Um, and it, there may be people's, um, you know, uh, the, they're traveling for for time. Like you mentioned, if you know, if it actually is done in pharmacies, they may be able to get them sure. at different places across the country. Psychotics. They may be in a new living situation. Yeah. Options Which are be good. An issue. Yeah. It's good options to have options. Good. I mean, options are good. And the options tolerability good. data from the phase 2B study are really remarkable for those who wanted this. Wanted right. it, right. At the People beginning. Who signed up for and it. And anecdotally, in my experience, is probably less than some of the others in the room in the clinical trials. It really is amazing how the discomfort goes away yeah. with the, it's each certain, injection. It's definitely less. There's no, and we yeah. have now people you know, on their third and fourth year of getting these injections in our clinic you know, as part of the LATTE 2 study. So. Wow. You know, it, it'll, it'll definitely have a, a following, I'm quite sure, and it'll be interesting to see if it increases over time and how that works. I thought it was interesting, the, sur the survey that was published in OFID, I should OFID. Add, uh, basically Who's the editor add, of that? Add, add, <laughs> basically <laughs> add, asked people with HIV, hypothetically, which would you rather do? Right. Would it be a, an injection, two injections every, every month, an implant in the arm twice a year, or a pill once a week? And the pill once a pill week, once a week was yeah. the winner. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that, that could yeah. be coming, yeah. actually.